So let's go straight into the conversation now and uh, uh, let's speak to our expert guest who's joining us. He's a data analyst and then also someone who's been very keenly following the numbers over the last few years up until now and will tease out a number of the key issues that should be of concern to you as well. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. Thank you very much. And uh, as someone who just loves working with numbers, I'm sure this is a comfortable space for you as sure, we discuss sure. uh, the Ashanti region. First of all, for those who are just watching at home, look at this map. It just gives you a clear picture. The blue line talks about the NPP. The red line talks about the NDC. The, con the region we are focusing on is the Ashanti region. But first, let me bring or ask your initial thoughts of how the Ashanti region has played in Ghana's politics. What was there? Why do they seem to almost always vote for the NPP? What about the NPP, you know, entices the Ashanti region, for which reason many just say it's their World Bank? I think uh, it's based on history. Okay. okay. Historical antecedents um, it proves that the MPP is, and how the MPP was formed, mm. I mean, it's based on historically how they have voted. And you can see that they have been able to contain the NDC historically mm. when it's coming to voting. Now, you look at the graph that we, uh, the, the, uh, the, the graph that we have, you can see that in 1996, the NPP did 65%, one mm. of their lowest, mm. but NDC did 32.8%. You can see that since then, mm. they have not been able to improve upon their margins beyond 30%. Mm. Within mm. that space of period, mm. And so the MPP has to be commended for being able to keep the NDC at bay. Right. In fact, they have not even been able to cross 30%, yeah. the 30% mark. Ever since 96. Exactly. Okay. And they were all, only able to do 28 in 2012. Mm. And even that one, 2012 was a general performance improvement for the NDC across the country. Okay. So it was not, it's not restricted to the just the Ashanti. the Ashanti region. Okay. So you can see that across all constituencies, at, at that time, Professor Mills has uh, passed on. Okay. And then uh, John Dramani Mahama came in. Okay. So there was some sort of a, a sympathy vote across uh -huh. the country. So if you look at all performances mm. across regions, across constituencies, where the NDC did very well in 2012, it's not only because it, they did well in Ashanti, but it's because I mean, countrywide, there was a, a national uh, support, support for the NDC. Mm. So, I mean, you look at the trend and you just ask yourself, why is it very difficult for the NDC to make gains in the yes. strongholds of the NPP? Mm. And let me add this. It is not only in Ashanti. The NPP has also sort of prevented the NDC from making gains in Easting. Mm. They have not even added a percentage point since 1996 in both uh, Ashanti and Easting. And Easting. So the stronghold of the NPP, it virtually has become a sort of a no-go area for the NDC. Very strong. Exactly. Okay. And I can also tell from these numbers that the only time they actually, even the, ND, uh, the NPP, I should say, went above 80 was when one of their own, John Ejekum Kufo, um, came as flag bearer of the party and led the party into its first victory. So that was in 2000 and the runoff. So in 2000, there was a runoff. And that was the only time he clawed 80%. Could you say it was because that was the first time the MPP as a party was even putting up a candidate from their World Bank or the stronghold? Could that be a factor? No, no. So if, if you are analyzing the data, I mean, the runoffs are what we call outliers. Okay. okay. They, don't, they don't follow the general trend because in a runoff, other parties are prevented from right. running. So you are having right. just the first two mm -hmm. uh, main parties who are running. Mm -hmm. And so because of that deciding factor, that is why they had the 80.5%. But it is more important to look at the numbers without a runoff. Okay. So Ejekun Kufo did 74 
0.8 percent into th that is his natural showing okay. at the first time okay. so you can see that apart from that the 80 is uh, it's a very high figure actually but it's because of the runoff mm. that is why it shoot up like that mm. so i would say that the npp has hovered between around let's say 70 to 76 that has been the range within which they, they have they, they, they have they have hovered mm. but you can see that even in their lowest ebb of uh, 2012 they still managed to cross the 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 70 percent mark which is something that uh, they have to be commended mm. and so in terms of performance you can say that as far as ashanti region is concerned the npp has some way somehow been able to uh, maintain their own mm. yes and maybe you want to land on your point before i come in but then the question i would want to ask is going into 2024 so this is historical data exactly. going into 2024 they are promising to even go past john ajekum kufo's runoff number of 80.5 percent they are they are promising, or the vice presidential candidate from the Ashanti region, Dr. Matthew Poku Prempe, is promising to get the party 85% of votes. You say they have been able to hold their own and keep the NDC at bay. Can they claw up to 85%? No, it's not, it's not possible. Really? Ne never. Why so? It, it is, they are not <laughs> even going to reach 80%. It's not possible. Okay. The best they can do is around 75%. Okay, and, and, and if you do 75% in Ashanti, I mean, it's a sizable yeah, lead. Exactly. The reason I'm saying it is not possible is that there was something in the 2020 data, okay, and it shows that generally, even across the country, voters were not, they gave an average pass mark mm. for the first term of the government. Mm. Ashanti region was not overly enthused. Mm. If you look at the numbers, if you look at growth rates in valid votes, mm -hmm. the NPP got just 9% of growth in valid votes okay. in 2020. Okay. The NDC got 29% of mm -hmm. growth in valid votes. Mm. But actually, in nominal terms, the NDC had 149,000 okay. of, of actual votes. valid vote increase over the 2016 mm -hmm. performance. And the NPP had 155,000. So it was a very close mm. contest. And so when it comes to increase in nominal vote, the first sign in the Ashanti region is that the NPP support base actually mm. didn't, didn't show up. Right. And you can look at one factor is also the percentage. Every region contributed a national pool. Yes. So every region has their percentage contribution. Mm. Historically, Ashanti region contributes around 19.2%. 19.2% total vote. Yes. That's what the Ashanti region contributes Contribute to, to the, the national, national pool. pool. Right. Okay. Right. In 2020, they did 187 They did below. Mm. And it's just because the growth rate of the NPP dropped. Mm. The support from their core members didn't come out as much as they wanted. Mm. So if you are looking across the numbers, apart from 2012, where they did low because of Professor Mel's part, 2016, 71%, it's one of their lowest, mm. apart from uh, 1996. So you mean that's 2020, 71%? Yes, 71%. Yeah, it's, it's their lowest, apart from uh, what they had in uh, 2012 mm. because of uh, uh, the sympathy okay. boots uh, that uh, enjoyed. Uh, enjoyed. Mm. So 2016 was not and necessarily a good year for the NPP. Ah. Yes, yeah, so the idea that we can claw more than 80 uh, percent, I mean, I mean, statistically, that, that is not that, that is not possible. Statistically, it's not possible. Yes. Okay. Right. Now, we'd also want to um, focus on the underlying factors that will let people come out to vote or not. I'm sure that one of the key considerations have always been the bit of the the way people feel, the way the electorates feel, their economy or their individual economies in the general economy. If they do not seem to agree with what the party is preaching, could that be why the, uh, there is the, the apathy voters, some have called it that, well, we support you, but instead of voting for the opposition, we might as well not vote at all, which then means that your numbers will, will reduce. Is that 
one of the factors. Yes, exactly. I mean, generally, Ghanaians look at economic conditions when they are voting. Okay, forget about uh, other factors. I mean, bread and butter issues are important to mm. Ghanaians. And even in deep blue regions like Ashanti, where you know that historically they will do well because it's their stronghold, you are, you are going to see the margins reduce. You are going to see the margin for the MPP a bit, become a bit contrived. Mm. Because, I mean, when people look at their lives, they ask themselves, I mean, road constructions, mm. the social interchange, these related issues. And there is a general sense of belief within the Ashanti region that they have not benefited that much yeah. from the ruling government mm. uh, in the ways that uh, they anticipated. Yeah. And so uh, I expect uh, a relatively subdued performance, even though uh, Mati Opoku Prempe is the running mate mm. coming from uh, Ashanti region. Mm. I still uh, expect a bit of a subdued performance uh, showing in the Ashanti region from the, for the MPP. It, as I said, uh, I will give them an upper limit of around 75% mm. and maybe a lower limit of around 70%. It was quite surprising, and this is to buttress the point yeah. you made, that even the former leader of the MPP caucus, that is uh, Oseche Mensabozu, who is a proper true and true Ashanti, had people, you know, hoot at him because they, be, they thought that as an MPP MP as the leader of the majority in parliament and someone who is from home, he was not even able to champion developmental, you know, causes in the, even in his constituency. So there was a time he went to the constituency and they were hooting at him. And that was more like the genesis of the Ashanti voter coming out to show their displeasure with the government. And quickly, the NPP as a party needed to set up and do, you know, get a number of things right. So we'll also now dive into a number of the dynamics